10 year anniversary. This is Ben Cook's show. He, he kind of threatened me and beat me and, and t- until I finally said, Josh, I want to do a show. It's like, I, I was like, I don't know. And, and, you know. He intimidated me enough. So now he, he's the host for one night only <laughs> on my first year anniversary on Twitch. This is this is literally it. So this is kind of a fun little like thank you. And, and I thought this would be a cool way to actually do it. So without further ado, I'll show up now. It's Ben Stern. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say uh, I'm going to readjust this camera. No so I'm a little more centered. That's good. Yeah, um, tra- tra- and professionals uh, here. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Doing it live in front of everybody. Um, and uh, I want to say congratulations on your uh, one year anniversary on Twitch. Yeah, thank and, you. Um, you know, I'm, I, uh, I also want to thank you. Um, you were one of the people that helped uh, me uh, crowdfund my comic um, in the spring of this year. And everybody's got their copies now. All of my rewards have been sent out. And Honestly, couldn't have happened without everything that you and and all the other podcasters did to help me kind of boost my signal. So you guys never get a chance to be interviewed or have anybody kind of uh, ask how you do what you do. But I, I'm like a naturally curious dude. So I always wonder about that kind of stuff. Okay. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I'm doing my last bit of advertising here. I do it. I honestly, all I'm going to let you in on a little secret. All I really do with people is telling mm-hmm. them what's already true, which is they can you can do this. Like there's nothing in this world that you can't do. There's no one in this world that can tell you no. But often, more often than not, um, we have to deal with our own bullshit, right? And that's the Correct. honest. That's the honest truth. Like we all have to deal with kind of a our own like. Hey, yeah, this is your worst enemy, right? I have eight rules of success, right? And the fifth rule. So I this podcast won an award four years ago Congrats. and or like four or five well something like that I've been, I've been doing this a while yeah and um i had like this real like like imposter syndrome moment and mm-hmm. it occurred to me it's like this is like i've done nothing different and then it occurred to me that's right i have done nothing different so i actually made a really honest assessment of myself yeah. how did i get here what do i do well what could get me in trouble I try to avoid number three as much as I can. I'm, I'm certainly human. I, I've definitely had my own share of fuck ups. I acknowledge those. Sure. Um, but one and two are super important because the thing is, it, it's like we all get in our heads like we don't, we are, we for whatever reason, we need some kind of like um, validation or permission or something. The yep. truth of the matter is, I kind of, I kind of look at it like this. It's not because we fear we can't do it it's actually i think the opposite is that we fear we can yep and absolutely. that's a and that's a very like that's a very real um fear it like imposter syndrome and fear of failure fear of success is actually the same fear it's a fear of change mm-hmm. right if i fail and i gave it my all well i'm going to change because i'm going to learn something from that experience i hope right mm-hmm. right but if uh if I if I succeed, well, now I'm going to have expectations on me I've never had before. Exactly. Right. So it goes both ways. It's the same fear, though. Ultimately, it's the fear of change. And what I have been able to do, like I've had this very fortunate interview with people like yourself who are kind of coming along and doing their own thing. I've had people who have been super uber successful on this show. I yeah. like. Like one of those surreal moments in my life was when I interviewed Spider Robinson. I've interviewed like Kat, Kelly Armstrong. I've interviewed Jonas Saul. I so it's like you get these really successful people on your show, and you're like, "How did I do that?" Men, yeah. a, right? It's it's one of those like weird, like surreal. But this is where this goes. You start yep. doing things, and just momentum happens. What the question is: Are you smart enough to get out of your own fucking way and just let it happen? Yeah. And I think preparation is key as well. Cause like, you know, a lot of things that I tried when I was younger that I thought I was going to kick ass at, I, I wasn't as successful as I expected to be. And it was just because, um, I hadn't done enough, uh, uh, legwork to be properly prepared for what the next stage was after trying, right. Cause trying is easy, but actually like going back after you try the first time and like, considering what you could have improved on or, or learning from the mistakes that you made. Um, 
that's that's the that's the hardest part to me um is to like and that's the getting out of your way part i think in 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 my mind is when you screw up don't don't feel like that's your character right and also when you succeed uh don't attribute that necessarily to your character it's like you're you're attempting you're working and you're developing and you're kind of climbing a hill you know so it's one step at a time kind of thing i i, I tend to look more like, like a roller coaster than a hill it's just a roller coaster that gradually gets farther higher and higher up as time goes on i actually because, see it the same way yeah 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 it's just because okay so I just literally wrote a column for, for a website and talked about the four reasons why freelancers get fired and client, you fire clients. The first reason I talk about is what you're just talking about here. Sometimes you're just not ready. Yeah. It's also ironically the most forgivable of all the sins because yes. here's the, here, it's, it's attitude is just, so this is going to probably be one of many controversial things I say tonight. I actually think talent is the least important thing to success. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Agree with you. It's, it, it's the attitude. Your attitude is everything. Now you're going to get your ass kicked sometimes. That's just, that's just life. Like you're not gonna, you're not going to go out there and say, I'm going to hit a home run every single time because that's just, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But your expectations what, are way too high. Yeah. Well, just, just go like, it's like this. You're going to have a success. You're going to have, you're going to have, failure you have success you got a failure and, and, and over time right over time if you if you stick at it if you stick to it and you keep going for it going for it going for it going for it bigger and better opportunities will come your way now what they look sure. like no one can say for sure i rule four like i have a look so the rule five is get your fucking right rule four is the rest is rain what, what that means basically is you can't control how the rain falls rain's gonna fall where it's gonna fall how it's gonna fall your job as a artist professional it doesn't matter what it is your job is to do everything in your power scale professional professional right totally, totally professional yeah totally. as the ear as the earphone flies out your job as a professional is to be do everything you possibly know how to succeed and have the fortitude when it where it goes your way to go yes and when in order to when it doesn't go your way, yes, you just keep going. Try not mm -hmm. to enjoy your highs, enjoy your successes for a moment. Take a moment to enjoy them, but it's a moment. And then you just keep going yeah. and you keep pressing on and you keep doing. For sure. Yeah. It's a, um, so like on, on the topic of talent, um, this is something that I've thought about a lot over my life because I've always been a creative person, but I always haven't had, I, I haven't always had access to um, the outlets uh, that, that allowed my creativity to kind of flourish. So I always wanted to play drums. I've always been a musical person, but drums was the instrument I wanted to play. I didn't have a chance to until I had already graduated high school. And that I, I felt like it was too late for me to start. So I, I waited until I was 26, 27, until I actually bought a drum kit and started playing. And, you know, I had, I had, you know, been keeping beats for people on hand drums and stuff like that for a long time. I knew that I had a natural, um, talent for rhythm. Uh, what I, what I call it is predisposition. So it's like some things that you like, you see them for the first time. You're like, I would love to do that. And that like, I think when, when you're, when your heart kind of like jumps right onto something, that's something that you should pay attention to and you should focus on. Um, cause it might not be exactly the thing that you found, but it'll be kind of adjacent to that in some fashion that you'll find, you know, your, your natural skill. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be necessarily good at it. So like, you still have to work your ass off at it. Oh, know? it, it are, mo most people, like, I think the biggest misconception about art is art and sports are similar in almost every way in mm -hmm. that you there's, especially someone wants to be a professional athlete, just for sake of argument. Yeah. There's great money to get to the top, but it's a lot of work to get there. It's, like, a, grind. It's, a, it's, it's a huge grind. It's, it takes discipline. Mm -hmm. Some of some of the most disciplined people I've interviewed on the show have had, come from either an athletic background or they take some kind of discipline along the way. I, I, I and it has prepared them for what they're doing now because art, there's no rules. Like you could end up literally anywhere. Like it, it, it really can go so many weird ways. The thing you hate the most might be the most successful thing you do, right? Like that's the thing about art. I, I certainly hope you don't hate it. Like whatever you do, well, you know, doing it. What I mean yeah. by like the thing you hate the most, like it, 
maybe to rephrase the thing you like the least might be the yeah. thing that people love the most. Right. Yeah. So, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wish Arthur Conan Doyle's fate on anybody because that, that, that is a, that, is a, that it would be a shit show. For mm -hmm. those of you who don't know, Doyle hated Holmes. He hated Sherlock Holmes. He actually killed him off. That was there. Right. And then years later was, just driven to write him more of him and he hated it that's why like the second act of holmes's life is such a mishmash like the early home stuff is the best stuff because it he he was invested in the character he, he just had gotten tired he said everything he wanted to say at it and then he introduced moriarty and killed holmes and then he brought holmes back and he's like oh sh shit right and that was literally that was yeah. literally his fate and and um I mean, Conan Doyle wrote Lost World, which is a really good book. But most people right. don't talk about that. Most people don't talk about Lost World. Most people talk right. about Holmes. So I mean, it can happen. I just, I just, yeah. I um, again, I never intended to do this podcast. It, it was an accident. Like it was a total. So how did it start? Like how long ago did it start? About seven years ago, almost now. Six years. Seven. I mean, seven, yeah. So, so what, I had, is, yeah. what was the, uh, the 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 catalyst that got you? You know, like uh, on camera. Oh, on camera? Okay, so that started a year ago. Um, so oh, okay. which, which, which would you rather first? I'll answer both questions. Sure, yeah. No, I want to hear I want to hear the whole story. So let's so, start. Okay, there. so I've been interviewing people for 20 years. Just okay. quietly, I've been publishing a bunch of different places. I've done interviews. I had the opportunity. Uh, so I had the chance to interview Robert J. Sawyer. And Robert J. Sawyer is the author of Quantum Night. At the time, it was Quantum, Quantum Night. We sent a lot of television series flash forward is based off his novels mm -hmm. uh his novel of it he's done a lot of really cool sci-fi novels so like i i'm a big fan of his writing and i got the opportunity to interview him and the interview went it's episode 20 on the podcast list on my youtube channel you can go listen to it you can hear it for the first five minutes i was nervous as hell because it's robert j sawyer sure. but we actually get to a really good back and forth and a fun a very fun interview and I remember, that, so I don't remember who he spoke to. I think it was Arlene Marks, but I could be wrong on this. He come out of the conference room where we were interviewing him because I finally got a cell phone for the first time. It's like, yes, that, that, and that's how far behind I was in the cell phone age. Was, uh, I, I'm <laughs> slow. I, I take my own damn time with technology. I, I mean, when I get into it, when, when I get into it, I really get into it, but I, I, I take my own sweet ass time. The, the thing about it was, like, we come out. And he's and so quote, and they asked Rob, what do you do? Oh, I interviewed Josh for his podcast. I didn't have a podcast at the time. Right. It's like, and I was like, I was about to correct him. And someone told me, it's like, well, you could do a podcast. And I'm like, what's stopping me from doing a podcast? So rest of that weekend, I gathered up. I did, I did a couple other interviews that weekend. And then I just, yeah, I started doing, like, I've never had a problem getting an interview ever. Like I yeah. always, like it got to the point where actually I had more interviews than what I was originally scheduled to do the show, which was just like weird to me. It's like, it, I've never had that problem. I'm already yeah. booked going, I'm already looking like in terms of the show right now, I'm already booked all the way to December when I'm stopping for Christmas break. Like literally I'm, I'm yeah. already almost, I'm almost already booked. So the, the idea is, um, so that's when it started. It was an audio show for like the first five years. And okay. then, um, but I enjoyed the audio format. I like, like again, I like, I, I was always a big fan of um, Larry King. Tom Schneider is a big one. Most people don't know the Late 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 Show, but Tom Schneider is a huge um, influence on my uh, style of interview. Cause I, I like the fact that, um, I like the, I like the fact that uh, he would talk. I, I still remember a conversation I remember most is we had Dick Clark on the show. Not happy Dick Clark, like serious Dick Clark, talking about yeah. all kinds of stuff. Ironically, in some ways, not that different than what we're talking about today in some way. So that, whether that's a good or bad thing, ladies and gentlemen, I will let you decide. But <laughs> what I will, what I, what I, what I, uh, but those interviews were interesting because you got a glimpse into the mind of real minds of some really successful people and what concerned yeah. them and bother them. It's like, that's an interesting thing. So I, I've always loved interviews and done interviews since, right? Um, what do you think it was that drew you to interviewing in particular rather than oh, 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 I'll tell you that. some people, uh, uh, uh. some people, they, they, they aim for a, a different angle rather than asking people what they think they like just kind of project their own thoughts into the universe. So what, what was it about talking to other people in the interplay that kind of 
brought you in? So, so, so my, per, my, my personal selfish reason when I started 20 years ago was so I can get into comics, which still, still, work, still working at it. Actually, I, it, my, my career arc that way has evolved quite a bit. And it's definitely mm-hmm. been, it's been, it's that I'm still, but we'll talk about this at the end. And I, I like, we'll talk about things I'm trying to learn too late to learn. I've been drawing for almost a year now too. Like this is the other, like. Yeah, I've been watching your trajectory. It's been yeah. very cool to watch. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing about, um, so here, here's the thing, right? So about, I started freelancing. I wanted to quit my day job like, for a while. What was uh, your day job? I worked at Pure Later Courier. I was a mm-hmm. sorter. Nothing against the company personally. I, like I will, you know what? I, I've joked about make fun of it. The truth of the matter is um, the company was a good place to work and was a good place to work for a long time, but I had done it for nine years. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I see, I've seen guys that have been there 20, 30 years. They got replacement knees and hips and shoulders and yeah. and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm just, again, there, there's that part of me, but there's also another part of me too. When you do this, start doing this, start doing creative stuff, and you're, that's what you're doing. And you're putting, I cannot tell you the, the impact of having a high of, you're spending a weekend, not like at a writer's conference, like guys like Rob Sawyer, but also like Randy McCharles, Craig DeLouis, Adam Dree, Susie Vidori, like people that are doing real some really cool shit. Yeah. What a high that is. And then the ne- then the next day you go back to your day job. Shaving boxes. It, and, oh, yeah. it, it, it's, right. it was, it's such a, it was so, not necessarily, I won't say a blow to the ego, but the engagement was so different. Dude, I am. I'm literally in the same place right now at this moment. So like um, I, I started doing interviews probably in May um, with bands because the the music angle is kind of the thing that, that drew me in. I'm always fascinated by what, what draws people into music and how they like create, um, you know, all, just out of sound. It just seems so magical to me that I always want to uh, talk to musicians about it. And so, we kind of set it up. We were started doing studio recordings and then we started uh, doing interviews and, and uh, you know, I was at a show last weekend um, at the bovine here in Toronto. And uh, you know, it was a punk show. It was one of the first ones since the pandemic and yeah. uh, the energy there and the feeling there. And I was like, this, this is so alive. This is so amazing. Oh, yeah. And then the next day back to work, you know, and it just like, it was like, I wish I could just stay in that, in that universe. Oh, yeah. you know? So that's part of the catalyst for why, you know, like I, I, I got involved in, in interviewing in the first place is because, you know, I don't, I, I love, I love working. I don't hate the job I do, but I think it's probably similar to what you were dealing with at Pure Later is like, it's not intellectually stimulating. Not even and, really. and at not some point really. the physical doesn't translate to the intellectual in a proper way. And you have to, you have to make a decision, right? Well, that, that was, that was a big part of it. I was also just raised like, so my initial plan was I was in Vancouver. I went to Vancouver. My initial plan was I was going into the movie industry. I had, I had some friends in the industry, but even so I just, there's such a demand. There's so much demand there. I, I'd end up being in a crew somewhere and I could actually mm-hmm. just do the goals, try something different, go down a different path. And I still would get a little bit of that physical it scratch because m- most people don't realize how much warehousing is actually in the movie industry. The less glamorous side of it is you're building sets. And if you're building sets, that's, that's as, that is as cut. It's construction. Cut. Yeah. It's totally, yeah. that's what it is. It's construction meets yeah. art. That's what movies exactly. are. Right. Yeah. That's what movies are. So there's nothing wrong. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but it was like, it was, again, it'd be something a little bit different. I'm creating something Right. Now, whether we did that, whether I had done that for a long time, who knows? I didn't care. I was at that point in my life where it's like, I'm done. Like you, you just, there's a, there will come a point with you too. You will mentally just check out. And when you hit that Me, point, man. You, <laughs> you, it, no, no, I ha, you might be there, but, but there's going to come a point for sure. When you realize you're going to realize something, if I got fired tomorrow, I wouldn't give a shit. And when you're at that point, like, like, like when you come to that point and you will come to that point, no matter what your financial situation is. You will come to that point. Like, I don't, I just can't do this anymore. So I was planning on leaving. Then the pandemic hit. So I made a decision to go back home. I said, I still was planning on freelancing. And that's why it's like, so to answer your video question here, the hardest thing about freelancing is what there's two parts of it. There's a mindset to it. And we'll get to that maybe a little bit. But for this, figuring out your niche 
keep in mind since the pandemic, my podcast episodes were gradually increasing anyway. Cause I was doing, right. uh, I was, I was doing, um, I not only was doing my regular two episodes. This is the difference between then and now folks. I was only doing two, uh, two episodes a week. And then I would do a reading episode, something a little different to break the formula. Cause I just, you know, you have to do that. Uh, when you do a show sure. like this, right. Yeah. So I got some great, like, Fonda Lee read, read stuff that she hadn't revealed to the world on my show. And that's just like very a really cool. cool, very cool little thing that's there if people ever want to look for it. Um, yeah. But people like that, I've had romance authors come read stuff on the show. I didn't care. Just whatever you want. Like the sure. idea was, the idea at the time was uh, very C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis would preach mere Christianity in the one London was being bombed by the, the Nazis. That seems like the most absurd thing in the world on one hand, but on the other hand, life goes on. Life always goes on. So yeah. I love that, and that's what I did. And then it hit me about October. It took me six months after being a freelancer trying to figure out what sticks to the wall, all that other bullshit. Sure. Wait, I already have a niche. My podcast is my niche. So why the fuck am I not? like? It, it's, it, it was such an obvious like moment. It was just like, and it's like, well, okay, so let's go to, let's, how would I do this differently? And then that's like, Twitch seems like a great place to do it differently. Mm. And, and that's so that I, I went to Twitch because one, there's not a lot of writers there. And I say that like, not in like a terrible way, it's just, just, there is a lot of untapped territory there. Right. And I, and there are other things I'd like to do visually with the show still, but again, that's, that's. We'll get there when we get there. It's not. It doesn't yeah. have to be right away. But the thing is, one of the things, like one of the other things I've started doing is, I do drink and draws with like people that work for Game of Thrones and Warner Brothers. And again, how the fuck? It's, this is what happened, right? Yeah, totally. So right. So that's so the answer to the question. Like the movement to video was an inevitability. Like my ultimate end game for the for what I'm doing. I'm good at this. If I ended up on like a set somewhere and I was interviewing people like you every day, it, that'd be great. But you know, yeah. you know that that that's that's it. Is that and the dream though? It's one of them. It's one of them. I I got lots. There's lots of things in life I want to do. Like yeah, totally. I got, I got books to publish. You know, I'd love to meet to meet a woman half as crazy as I am, maybe even crazier than I am, where I'm the adult. Cause that that'd be hilarious. But also just be, just because um you know like there's again life's about living in the, like life especially now if you're not thinking about living in that moment but what you want to be who you want to become now you never will and that's and i and yeah. to those people i'm like i'm sorry to everybody else go for all the shit that matters i want to be a best-selling author i want to have my shit turned into video games i'm not interested in movies so much i'm interested in video games um yeah Right. I love comics. I want to do comic shit. I got, I got lots of like goals and, you know, and I'm getting, I'm kind of hitting all those little like spots in, and again, ways I never anticipated. So are you kind of a strategic person or are you someone who kind of just, uh, you, you know, wh whatever, wherever the wind is blowing, you just kind of go that direction. Bit of both. Bit yeah. of both. Um, you're an idiot if you don't recognize an opportunity. And this is how I say it. Like, sometimes if you're going with the flow and you just one thing's leading to another, leading to another, leading to another, if it's along the path you're going on, why the hell not? Like, just not? Right, 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 right. It doesn't yep. necessarily, like, okay, I just showed you. I'm doing a show about Canadian immigration. I'm trying to convince people to come to Canada. Not what was on my radar, but same token, I'm hosting a show. I'm on a show formally talking about like dealing in a corporate environment. I'm reading out like information that goes, that's it, read on any show you see on television. So I'm getting, so I could look, it's like, it's not what I expected. You're right. But what it is, it's an opportunity for me to expand, take skills that I can use in things I actually want to really, really, really want to do. Exactly, yeah. Right, and it's also along the lines of what I'm doing. So why would I, I'm trying to get away from like this ordinary job crap because it, 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 there's no future in it. There, there really isn't, like, there's none, right? So this this time now is, is it, like I said, you're, you're gonna see it as the uh, next couple of years, there's gonna be a lot of hemorrhaging in the way jobs have been done. 
It, it, yep. There's going to be. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. Right. Some of the decisions we have made is actually going to speed up this process, not slow it down. Yep. So, so, um, it, it's going. So, what, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a lot of people looking for a purpose in their lives. So, I think we all need that actually. I, yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of people that are like, you know, there's a <laughs> when you sit when you sit in your room by yourself for you know six months, eight months, a year, you can't help but eventually get to a point where you're like, what am I even doing? You know, oh, yeah, and then you start thinking about what do I want to do? Yeah, you know, um, that, like I reached that point. So like I run my own business now, but I I was I was in culinary for like 15 years and. The point when I was like, I got to get out of this shit. I I had been slowly making my exit over time, but the moment where I was like, okay, I'm done. I need to I need to take a break and figure out what I'm going to do next was when I got a shoulder injury, and I and I was forced to take a week and a half off work. And during that week and a half, I had nothing better to do, so I was writing, and because uh, I was working on my novel at the time, and. Uh, you know, by the end of that week and a half, I was like, I don't want to go back. I want to just sit and continue writing. I'm all, I'm like, I'm, I finally got a flow here where I'm not having to like, you know, wedge this into the rest of my life. This is, this is my life now. And now I have to go change it again. So like, it was a matter of like a, a couple months and I was like, I'm out. And I took two months off and then started my business because yeah. it gave me flexibility. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, so we'll go into freelancing a little bit freelancing is really about if you really sit there and think about what freelancing is freelancing is you're a glorified customer service agent mm. but what you serve what you serve is is entirely up to you my services are my voice because i have a big mouth and i'm good at it i also can do video stuff i can write stuff i can even edit stuff although editing is not necessarily where i'm most comfortable i can still do it for you mm -hmm. right especially like comics. I'd love to do more comic stuff, but I, like I said, at this point, I think Chuck Pano kind of has the market cornered that bastard, but that's okay. He has the market cornered for the moment, but yes. he is an amazing resource if you ever wanted to do it too. Oh, no, 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 no. He's a no, great no, guy no. when it comes to like, he's not, he's not a gatekeeper. You know what I mean? No, no, he, I, 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 I just, Chuck is actually a very sweet dude. Uh, we had a private talk about this and, and, and I actually gave him advice that he actually should raise his rates a little bit because he's he's actually worth it. Whether he's done oh, it yeah. or not is another is another story. But well, you and I are telling him the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it, that like that's that like he's worth it. And so, mm -hmm. and so here I am, folks, advertising another person's great service. If you need comic <laughs> edited, go get Chuck's comics edited, straight up. Um, but it's it's one of those things where you you, you that's it like. What do you offer, Tommy? And your challenge is, what's your service? What do you offer? And how do you reach as many people as you can? Yeah. That's it. Like, it, it's not, it took me a year and a half to figure this out. But once I did, it's like, oh my God, this is this is easier slash harder than I, than I possibly could imagine. Um, there's been, so I remember one month, like, when I, so, and that mentality also completely wrecked me for employment because I, I could not keep a job this year to save my life. Cause I couldn't, yeah. I, I could not anymore look at my boss as my boss. It's not even like as a bad, like in a bad, because I'm used to doing my thing. And, yep. and what happens and what's happened is a boss would try to do some of the stuff that works on employees. It doesn't work on me. I really, I only right. care about, I only care about one thing. The stick and the carrot only work if you're afraid of the stick or the carrot, or you yeah. want. To. But if you can get your own carrots and you don't need the stick, yeah. And, 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 and even if you and even if you need the stick, there's something there's something about like, I know what I'm made of. Like there, that's the thing that you, you get that confidence. So yes. I I think this is this is one of those things about freelancing is once you recognize kind of what the game is, it's like oh, and if more people recognize that with their real jobs, employment would have a very different meaning either. So do you think that this is something like what you do, the freelance sort of mentality at the very least, depending on like what people's skill sets are, do you think that that's like the future or do you think yeah. that's uh, like unique to a particular mindset and that not everybody's going to be, because like I've learned from my culinary time 
you know, I ended up finding myself just naturally being uh, thrown into leadership positions. And it wasn't something that I necessarily wanted. And I refused a lot of it because I felt like I was unqualified. But, you know, my personality is my personality and it ended up being what it was. But I did work with a lot of people who they really needed instruction. They needed guidance. They weren't really good at like making the hard decision on their own. So I wonder so, if it's something that you can learn or if it's something that's sort of natural to you. I think I, I, I think it, it, for me it's natural partly because just of how I grew up. But at the same time, okay, so this is what I think. I'm not going to go too detailed. What I think is happening right now, where all you think, where we can talk about all the things, but where really I think boils down to is the system as we know it today is obsolete. I agree. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, that system as we know it today is completely obsolete. Yeah. You don't need, you, you really do not need, a lot of the things that we think are just being needed really aren't anymore. And that's and that's on every aspect of life. Oh yeah, like, no, the entire is, system was, was created by people who wore silly hats and wrote with feathers. Like, yes. we haven't but, updated the cell phone. But, but, but it's, more, it's more than that. It's, there is an interesting opportunity right now that a lot of people I don't think realize. It's mm -hmm. this. What's a community? This, this, by the way, this is, I'm either on something or I'm onto something. We'll let you decide which is which here. Okay. Sure. Um, me and you are talking thousands of miles away. I can talk to people in the United States. I've talked to people in India, Greece, uh, China, uh, Australia. Doesn't matter. That and is, all those people can, have been tuning into our conversation right now as well. So absolutely. Absolutely. Your so, accents are like gone. Yeah. Yeah. So what's a border? Like seriously, like what's the border in that kind of world? Right. Very much an imaginary line. And if the border is an imaginary line, what's a government? Now right. let's go. Let's go one step. Let's do. Let's take another angle. You have cryptocurrency. Money is information today. Let's like no matter like like what's what's going on right now is we're seeing that inevitable evolution of money becoming data. Well, crypto does doesn't require a banking system. So. The banking right. system we have used for hundreds of years is no longer needed. Let's go another. Let's go another thought. Education. Yes, it's great to have teachers and training, especially in certain things. But there's a lot of things I can go to YouTube and do a how-to video and learn. Yep. Educate education as we know it can, is is in a drastic. So that's education. There's one more. There's one more major one. Media. I don't watch the news. Do you know where I actually find my information now? Social media, and I don't talk about like the, those conversations. I actually will go down hashtags, look at data. People sure. are sharing inf so much information today that yeah. I have a very. You're getting it directly attitude. from the source. It's not being filtered through a media outlet or. Particular no, absolutely, absolutely bias. not. So, right. so what? So it's it's so it's very interesting that social media now has started implementing censorship in this era because I think they realize the same thing I am. I can get information on my own. I can make better, more informed decisions on my own than I can be in this system, which yep. means so that comes. So what that means is this system is obsolete. So what we're seeing right now is an overall of everything. Now, that, now that, again, I think there's a direction, certain powers that we want to go. I think we have a very big say on where we do go. The question is. I, I think the real question is, do we realize the power we have? I think right this minute, no. By and large, people are very unaware of this. Again, I'm either yeah. on something or on to something. I'll let people make that our own decision on that. But the fact of the matter is that the tools exist for me today in almost every way to completely separate myself from the system as we know it. I don't yeah. even need their currency anymore. Now, this is a well, very narrow... This, this, this is, is a conversation. Like I think about this shit all the time. Yeah, so. yeah. So this, this is, this yeah. is. So, this is what, in my opinion, the vaccine passport is really all about. It has nothing to do with the COVID. It has nothing to do with the vaccine. It has everything to do with access. So yeah. what that, so what that come, what that means, folks, is this: if we go down this path, the whole system, by and large, will remain the same. That is something I think is not necessarily a good idea because I also kind of think this too. I think the system's on its death rows. I, I, I really I, Do you I, want to I, push I, back a little bit? Go, go push back. Go ahead. Cool. 
So my feeling is, I think you're, I think you're mostly on track in terms of how I perceive things. I think what we're watching is the inevitable decentralization of, uh, of society. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, um, it's next to impossible for, um, these, these, uh, governments to keep up with the way things are changing. And so, uh, as the pace increases, uh, the ability of the individual to keep up, uh, outmatches the ability of an entity or a system or a centralized, um, process to keep up as well. You got to think about it. Like, so the way I think about it is like, I'm a speedboat and, and the government is a battleship. Right. And so I, if you want to turn the battleship, it's going to take a long time. Speedboat, all I got to do is turn the wheel and I'm in a different direction. So the advantage is on me. So I don't think necessarily the system is going to collapse. What I think is going to happen, in my opinion, is that people who uh, crave uh, authority, because they're, they're not few, I don't think no. there are as many as we think, but there's enough of them, are going to steer themselves towards this uh, maintaining this centralized system and other new systems are going to start emerging. And this is what happened in the 19th century and the 18th century as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, right. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit of a friendly pushback on you. Cause I think, I sure. think there's, I, I think, I think here's the thing. Everybody mentions Bill Gates as the boogeyman and the bad guy. What mm-hmm. I remember about Bill Gates, however, is what he said when Microsoft had, was dealing with internet Explorer back in the late nineties. Right. He said it himself, I'm not worried about IBM. Those guys, for the exact same reasons you just said, they're going to go very, very, very slowly. I'm worried about the guy in his basement taking this technology and coming up with something new because I right. cannot stop that. But what I can do, and this is what he tried to do, and he did succeed for a very long time, mm-hmm. right? I can stifle the movement in this direction. What I think, and this is this is the thing, like oh, this is what I think about the Vax Pass. That's what this is about. It's about stifling that movement as much as possible. I don't. I think inevitably, um, I think the system collapses. That that part of it will have to collapse at some point, because it it's the only way for things to diverge. What I right. So I guess my question is, uh, when you say collapse, what do you mean? Do you mean what revolution I, or do you mean just a natural, like it just kind of dissolves on its own? A bit of both. It depends on what part of the world, what part of the world you're in. If you're watching what's going on in the world yeah. right now, if you're watching what's going on in Australia, for example. Yeah. Holy shit. Right. Holy shit. Lots um, yeah. well, uh, of Europe as well. There's huge yeah. protests going on. Well, 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 no, Europe, Europe. Okay. Again, it's different in England than it is in Austria. Right? Mm-hmm. Austria, it, right. It, it, it's very, very like, so what's hap- what's happening here? What's happening right now? If you're watching that, is you recognizing the fact like Europeans, a lot of them still have memories of World War II, still have memories of some of the concepts. I think the irony that IBM made the blockchain for the Vax Pass and also made the punch cards from Nazi Germany. I think the irony in that cannot be like like dismissed so easily. Correct. So I I, I so. And again, we are coming again. We much like when Nazi Germany came out in the '30s, when the World War II was over, we entered a new age. Well, this we're coming yep. to the same point. Whatever this, like, we are never going back to normal. I think the biggest lie that that I hear, we are never going back to normal again. The question really is: the reality is that the normal wasn't very normal in the first place. No, it wasn't. No, it yeah. wasn't. But going, but going one step, but going one step further, right? We're not even gonna go back to that. Where are we going? So it really, it really, really depends. The, the, the. Here's but but the nature of all change like this. People that have been in power for a very, very long time want to stay in power. It's just human nature. There's no magic conspiracy about that. And people and people like me who kind of have nothing to lose are looking at it going. There's a lot of opportunity right now. So there's going to be kind of like this clash of what yep. that is and how that's going to be. And that's what's going on right now. Yep. I don't like, like everybody else can say COVID. Everybody else can say, that, I don't know. That, that's not what's going on. That, that, that is, that is the, that is the dressing. The real battle is this. Where are we going to go tomorrow? Because tomorrow is here. 
And that's, and that's the truth. And if you think, if you're going to think like it's going to work like it did when your parents were kid, when your parents were going to work, no, it's not. That doesn't yeah. mean there aren't going to be, and going back to what you said, that doesn't mean there aren't going to be jobs that are going to require people to come in, show up to work and do their thing. There always will be something like that around. Sure. However, however, no one's retiring. What I think, what I, what I truly, what I truly think as far as that goes is, is most of what we've done now, everything is going to be transitory. We're no longer in a world of stability. Like you're not, you get a job in a corporation, chance of you staying in a corporation for life is virtually zero. You get yeah. a job in a kitchen, the chance of you staying in that kitchen longer than a couple of years is zero, right? What's going, what, like every, every job has become disposable. That is the unfortunate truth of the world. What that means, however, is there's opportunities to create new things. That's what's going to happen. Like, assuming we do not let ourselves go down the full path of segregation, divide and conquer, there's so much possibility of what we could do literally today, right? Literally well, today. So I, the, the, I think um, for me, over the course of the, the pandemic, talking to friends and family members and, you know, just people, you know, I interact with a lot of different people. Um, I found that uh, there's a, uh, I think the lack of awareness that I do notice, I think people, everybody has a very strong sense of what they think is going on and what they think is coming. Um, and uh, I find their perspective on where they think things are headed is relative to where they want things to be, not necessarily the reality of the situation. And my, my opinion is that um, if you want a centralized authority, then you're, you're choosing uh, to let uh, decisions be made for you on your behalf. And I, I'm not moralizing, I'm not passing judgment on that particular perspective. I just think that if you want one, then you have to accept that the other is the case. And uh, I think people of your and my disposition find that to be frustrating. Um, we are people who we like to observe the world and draw our own conclusions and make our own decisions and act and take the risk that comes with uh, being our own person, right? Mm -hmm. um, but not everybody is, is inclined towards that or even ready for that. And so I think a lot of the, de the decisions that are being made by people or the, the influences that they're allowing into their lives are relative to their concern about which risk they want to take on. That's a very, um, I would say this, this is a, I think that's probably a very Canadian point of view. And I mean, <laughs> and, and, and the, way I, the reason I say this is because Canadians by their very nature are not risk takers, right? But, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying they're very, risk -takers. very British. Uh, well, we're we're even British for British when it comes to risk. I think I know some yeah. Brits. I I I've met some Brits with some huge like 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 cojones either or, or lady bits, whatever you want to go by, sure. right? Right. Yeah. Um, I also think it depends on the community you're in 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 uh, the Canadian absolutely. context as well. No, no, no absolutely. But just yeah. from my I, just from my experience living across the country. Sure. Um. I find I find like like compared to an American, my risk ability might be a six or a seven, maybe right. more towards a six. I'm more more, but in Canada, I'm closer to a nine or a ten. Yep. Right. I'm closer to a nine or a ten yeah. um, because I I recognize the value again. I do understand the value of structure, which is something living in Canada you do have. Canadians undoing in this, and this is something that I think all Canadians kind of have to be aware of. Canadians, as a general rule of thumb, love order. That's the that's that's their general rule of thumb. That's not always a great thing, and I think I, I think I, I think that that desire for an order or an answer is very dangerous when you're not when if you're afraid of what might happen tomorrow. And so that's, that is, it's something that, again, if you want to do the comparison, Australia very much is similar to us in attitude. They're not, they're a little bit more in your face, 
but they're by and large, they have a lot of our sensibilities. Mm -hmm. So to Canadians watching and listening to this, really pay attention to what happened in Australia during the last 18 months, because we are not that different and we could very easily go down that path. Yeah. I'm not saying we will, because I can't predict the future. I uh, was listening to uh, Jocko Wilnick's, I'd listen to Jocko's podcast, and yeah. he was doing a book about military incompetence. And one of the things I really loved about, about that whole thing was being detached from the outcome of the situation. I can hope for a renaissance, right? I can also see ruin. That doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't necessarily mean either of these things are going to happen. Of what, 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 right? What that means is I'm aware that there's there, there is a lot of good that can come from this moment in time. There's a lot of bad that can come from this moment in time. That's the and, unique thing about this experience about this particular moment. Actually, yeah. I think is that um, and I and I've talked to my bandmates about this. Is like the, I think a lot of the reason people are scared is not because of the certainty, but because of the, the infinite possibilities that could emerge from this because the wheels fell off the wagon. And now it's like, we're all yelling about what we should do next. And the, the possibilities literally are endless well, yeah. uh, as to what, what could, what the future could, could, uh, could look like. I think that's always been the case though. And I think sure. that we've been acculturated to believe that things are very simple and that they follow a very, uh, very particular, the idea of human nature, I think is sort of like, it's limiting. Um, I don't think that we, I think we have uh, biological tendencies that come with being a primate, but beyond that, we have shown ourselves to be capable of transcending our nature over and over and over again. And like, we, we forget that at our peril, I think. Because we can go down the wrong road too. The infinite potential also includes destruction so you know well so this goes back to what i said about being in love with the outcome mm -hmm. so if you keep an open if you can keep an open mind i think we should go a certain way based on my nature i've already said that the vax pass is a terrible idea i mean yeah. it's a horrible idea that all said right um other people might disagree with me that's cool sure i right right and i'm not again i'm not here to, to debate that. What I will tell you is every day I get new information. Every day I reevaluate my premises. I'm not right. in love with the, I'm not in love with the outcome. Right. Oh, but if I get, but here's the thing, if I get enough information that tells me it's going to go one way, it's very likely going to go one way. And if I can see the reactions again, if I see the reactions going around, around the world, I already kind of, I, I, I just, I just think human nature isn't that different anywhere you go. So where, where, I can see Canada where Europe is in a year. Easy, right? Mm -hmm. I can see it easy because there's going to come a point where people are going to be like, are going to push back against this to some degree. That all, that all said, um, right? I don't know what that tipping point is going to look like. I have, an, I have an idea, but I don't know what that tipping point is actually going to look like. So what in the meantime, things can change. Tomorrow, sure. tomorrow COVID could mysteriously disappear. I don't think that's going to happen, mind you. Very unlikely. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but it's a possibility nonetheless. I'm not yeah. I'm not of the mindset that anything's impossible. Right. And so we as as we we like order, we like structure because we like a guarantee. There is no such thing. Life is fragile. At the best of times, life is fragile. At the worst yeah. of times, you're just aware of that fragility. But in that fragility, there is again. There's, there's infinite possibilities. There is magic right. that can be made. Yeah. That's the. That's the. That's the. Um, that's the. Uh, that's the beauty. But the thing is, it's not for the pain of heart. It's just not like you're gonna go out there. Like you're gonna get your ass kicked some days. Right. Hell, there's no guarantee tomorrow. I'm gonna wake up. Like that's how fragile life actually is. Like yeah. there's none. None of those guarantees. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we've I think we've been uh, we've been distanced from our own mortality for enough generations that it's become forgotten. And this is something like when you when you read old uh, like religious texts, 
all the stories that are in there are are kind of they follow a similar vein which is like the society is uh, establishes some form of equilibrium right where everybody's kind of working towards a common good and then they lose sight of their goals and they become decadent and comfortable and a little soft and then someone comes along and says we did this before and this didn't work out. If we do not change course, we will run into the iceberg. And everybody goes, ah, eh, what do you know? Everything's been fine for a hundred years. And then there's an iceberg and no one's paying attention. And then there's chaos, right? But it it never results. The thing I the thing I, I, I worry about is that everybody has this attitude that it's either everything's gonna be a utopia or we're gonna be the species is gonna be wiped out. And it's like there's so much room in between those two poles Absolutely. that are far more likely. And I think, um, I think multiple things could happen simultaneously. So I think we could have some places that are utopian, some places where, um, you know, the it's uninhabitable for whatever reason, or, you know, people just wipe themselves out through whatever, um, crazy situation occurs. But like, it's not, I, I don't think, you know, the planet's been around for 7 billion years. Meteors have hit it. All sorts of crazy shit's happened. It's still, life is still here. So, like, the idea that we could, like, the planet's going to be fine. It's a matter of, like, what we want um, our future to be, you know? Well, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about life, here's the beautiful thing about life. I can fuck up, and by and large, my consequences are tiny. Right. That's the truth. Like that that's, is the because, that's because of the safety we have though. No, 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 no. I could be a great, a world class. Hey, listen, I could be like Genghis Khan. I could be like a mountain of skulls and I could literally walk over the wall with them. Wouldn't matter. At the end of the day, this is the best. This is the greatest. The greatest gift we have is time. It's also our greatest curse. It's also, it's a great, our great, it's our curse because we forget. That's the thing about it, right? Like, like what you're mm -hmm. talking about, we forget the fragility. We forget what we fought for. We forget all those things. Right. But at the same time, what it means is that also tomorrow, we have a chance to start new. And the best thing about that is, right? No matter how bad I screw up, almost it is almost a guarantee. No matter how bad I screw up, chances are, my mistakes will eventually be forgotten. World doesn't care. And that's the best thing about it, right? So I look at it like you are, what is going to become, the other thing I think is going to be very apparent, I think for the, at least in the short term, we're going to become a far more dishonest society in the next couple of years. There's going to be a lot less, the rules are going to get fast and loose, I think, it's time for the next so couple you don't, of years. You don't think they're fast and loose already? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> on that. No, 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 no. I, I think I, I think most of I think most of what we think to uh, think of as stability is is uh, oh. is a convenient illusion. No, no, stability. I'll agree with you there, but we haven't. So I guess we should talk about background. So my dad's from Detroit. He grew up in the '60s. He was a he was a he was a white kid in a black neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. and the tanks rolled on into his neighborhood during those big protests, right. right? That was there. My grandfather grew up in Germany and he was part of the Hitler youth. So I have a very, so I have a very different perspective of what sure. dishonest is than most people. We haven't gotten to those extremes yet, but do I see us going sure. there? Yep, I do yeah. because um, we, again, this is the trap I think Canadians fall into. We love order. Rules doesn't necessarily guarantee order, but the tendency is right. we're going to put more rules in. So we're going to create this Chinese finger puzzle effect. The tighter we pull, the tighter the noose will get, and the more things will slip out. That's what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Like law, I, I, Again, it's one of those old lessons. You need a balance of freedom somewhere. If you don't have it, you, you will create a dishonest, ruthless people. And that... Sorry. So I'm curious. Um, mm -hmm. Let's imagine that you uh, you get to be in charge. Mm -hmm. What do you think we should do right now? Uh, it's like with a let's let's assume you have a four year term, just like the average prime minister does. What would you do with it? 
Uh, okay, this is complete. This is probably the complete opposite of what everybody else would do. I would, I would first off. I'd be building better nurse homes. I'd be better building healthcare facilities, hospitals. The one thing COVID, the one thing COVID has basically taught us is basically we are ill prepared as a country to handle these things, handle a real emergency. Mm -hmm. So we also we underpay our nurses, our doctors, our right. So first thing I would do, because this would go a long way, I would I would probably that would be the first thing I do. The second thing I would do is I would do what Sweden did and I would live with it for a year because that I'm going to follow William Mann's perspective on this, not what we're doing. I feel like it, although it will be very painful in the short term, I think in the long term it is a better course of action than what we're doing. Um, I, again, things on I'm reading and seeing, I think the meat grinder has unfortunately has just begun. And I think that's, I would rather, there's going to be there's going to be pain no matter which way we go. But I, I also get to take, yeah. uh, um, I, I if you want people to feel less fear, make them go seem more normal. The third thing I would do is I would be, I would stop printing money. I would be a lot. I think I think I can see a financial collapse of our dollar. I, I mean, people have already noticed how high inflation's gone up now. It's going to get worse next year. Well, no, the, the, the economic system is on the rails now. It's, yeah, it's, no, it, it, no, it's yeah, it's to, it totally is. Barely, so, barely hanging on. Yeah. So, and then, and then final, and then finally, um, and then finally, I, I, I would be, I would be forcing companies to be liable. You want people to be a certain, you want people to have certain things or do certain things. You're liable for everything that you get them to do. Because if you're, you're talking about like, like Pfizer, Moderna, that kind of stuff, that not just that stuff, anything along those lines, because mm. Right, because because here's the thing: you are asking people. Here's the flip side, all right? You're asking people to take a risk. Polio was on um, children was tested with two million children before it was ever allowed. Smallpox was tested by on an army for two years prior to being allowed. People people have been forced. What makes this really tough is that you're basically telling people you're taking a risk. There's no liability, so if something does happen to you, nobody's going to come save you, right? And on top of that, if you don't take it, you can, you're not working. So there's a can't win situation either yeah, way. So consequences either way. Yeah. 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 So that's that's it. There are there are. So if 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 you're asking people to take that kind of risk, then companies and government should be taking the same risk. And if a company or a government is unwilling to take that risk, then that then they can't do anything. Also, I would. Yeah. Uh, also, I would restore doctor-patient confidentiality. I think that is this is why I don't. This is one of the other big reasons I do not like the Vax Pass is um, that protects people a lot more than people realize. And yeah. uh, and honestly, if you want a vaccine policy that actually works, folks, Japan does a vaccine policy that actually works really well. Doctor-patient confidentiality completely. No one takes the same vaccine regimen. Everybody gets one tailored to them. On top of that, right? No one talks about it. That's how it's done. Yeah. You can you can build a system like that and it works and everybody's happy. No one cares. Right. Right? Because it's not about it's not really about taking a vaccine or not taking a vaccine. Here's what it's about. Are you getting a treatment for it? And if you're getting a treatment for it, do I care what it is? Nope. That's that's been that's been my yep. concern since the beginning is this mm-hmm. uh, this desire to fit every square peg in every round hole, regardless of whether it makes sense or not. And like, you know, for example, um, my mother has uh, uh, respiratory issues. Mm-hmm. So COVID was a real concern for us. Absolutely. But she also has issues with her heart. And the doctor almost gave her the Moderna vaccine without checking first to see if it was safe. Mm -hmm. And she got a second opinion. And the second opinion was do not take that thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, also the mixing of the vaccines that really bothered me because, Mm -hmm. you know, it was like, and this, this happened. I mean, this happened in my house, you know, uh, my girlfriend and, and I got the first shot uh, Pfizer. And then when the second shot was booked, uh, my girlfriend was like, uh, I'm not getting Pfizer for the second one. And I was like, you're not. 
there. And so I called to get my second appointment and, and I asked, I said, I, I, the only, the only way I'll take it is if I can guarantee that I'm getting the second dose is the same as the first dose. And they said, we can't guarantee that. And I was like, why not? And they said, well, if you want that, you'll have to go to a private entity. You'll have to go to shoppers, drug mart, or one of the other people that supply it. And my thought was like, why are we outsourcing this? Mm -hmm. uh, the, why are we outsourcing the choice when the public option should be the, the focus, right? Like it seemed like they were just rel relinquishing all responsibility for what was going to happen if anybody got harmed. And it was like, and then, and then all of this documentation came out where like the World Health Organization was saying, do not mix the vaccines under any circumstances. Okay, and I'm like, well, there's so much miscommunication going on. You can't even keep track of what the hell's going on. On top of that, I mean, a lot of people will tell you, yeah, so mRNA vaccines have been, the concept of the technology has been studied for 60 years. But when you do a vaccine test, when you're testing a vaccine on a population, and that's usually, it's a small group for about two years. Why? Mm -hmm. Because in two years, you'll see a little bit of the long-term repercussions yeah. of it or as well. Yeah. This has not happened. So I'm waiting because to me, I do not think there is enough information out there to justify taking the shot. I know lots of other ways to treat COVID. I, if I ever get it, I don't get sick very often anyway. So if I, and again, this is me acknowledging a risk. I'm not saying folks, I'm right on this. I'm taking a risk for totally. everybody else, right? You know, you know I, what, I, think, I think my problem with the way people are acting right now is there's a lot of hair on fire attitude around yeah. the vaccine. And what I find is that it's, and I'm probably going to offend some people when I say this. So I'm glad I'm on your platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't give a shit. So. But, uh, but you know, the, the thing is, it's it's a little bit hypocritical. Um, because uh, I, I have no problem, personally, I have no problem with someone making the choice not to get the vaccine. I chose to get it. I don't think that, I don't even honestly think that I needed the vaccine. I was basically doing it because... Um, you know, the people in my social circle uh, felt that it was important and I would rather hang out with them than, than not. So, and, and for me, I weighed the risk. I waited a little longer than they did. Um, and, uh, and I made the choice that, uh, you know, I'm in good health. So I think either way, I'll probably be okay. Um, but it doesn't bother me that someone else wouldn't get it. And I don't think that if you and I were to hang out, masks off, in an enclosed space, maybe even make out a little bit. I don't think uh, I have anything to worry about. You know what I mean? No, I, no. I, you, I think one. Okay, so one of the most scientifically, well, it's it. This has been marketing. This has been again. This is very much 1930s Germany. Um, yeah. I do. do, you mind, do you mind if I just finish my thought real quick? Yeah, sure. No, sorry. I'm sorry. sorry I jumped in. Apologies, but I just want to finish my thought. But the issue is when when uh, uh when I've had discussions, especially when I was like pumping the brakes on getting the vaccine for myself because I wanted to see how it affected people on a large scale first. Because I figured if there's going to be any immediate consequences, if I wait three to six months, I'm going to find out. And that's how long I waited. And I felt like that was a fair thing to do. Um, but I got a lot of pushback from people around me. And my thinking was, um, you know, their concern was that my choice was going to un uh, unnecessarily put them in, uh, at risk. And my thought was, you just injected yourself with a vaccine that doesn't have any prior testing and you might be putting me at risk mm -hmm. by doing that, but no one is considering the risk on the one side and, and the other side is like the highest priority ever. And that to me is a little hypocritical. I, I, I just would prefer if we were all a little more honest about the fact that we're in uncharted territory either way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so all right, let, let's, it, so let's, let's, uh, okay, like risk I've considered that I bet you a lot of people haven't. Sure. I don't know what this vaccine does to the heart. I honestly have no idea. I don't think anybody or can to honestly. Anything. To no. the liver, to the brain. But, yeah, especially since this, they have found nano deposits of the vaccine in various parts of the body in certain mm -hmm. studies. So no one knows what that's doing. I don't. Right. No one does. So right. what, and, and I've had my own experience with nano poisoning. I'm not like, I'm not so quick to, to jump into anything with nano into it twice. I'm just not. My own experience sure. was horrific enough. And, um, but on top of that, okay, make a pilot get a shot. 
what if he has a heart attack on the plane? Like, we don't even know who's at risk from the shot at this moment in time, right? That could happen. Same with a bus yeah. driver, same with a cop, same with firefight. Like, it can happen. And we, and there's no way to, there is no way to honestly say, now, I have heard some good reasons to take the vaccine. I've heard some very interesting arguments to take the vaccine. Yep. None of them, none of them are anything I hear from the mainstream. They're like, I've, I, I know friends who've gotten the shot. I like that basically said, look, my dad, I, I have one particular person, I'm not going to name them. I'm getting the shot because my dad had a really bad heart issue with COVID. And I'm, I, I feel like it's a bigger risk for me. And I understand that. Like, I honestly understand that. Like, that's that not, makes perfect sense. yeah, yeah. I, I don't like, I'm never going to tell someone don't take the vaccine. What I am going to tell somebody though, is really look around see for yourself where it's going to go. I, for my research on the vaccine, I've been studying England, Germany, Qatar, Israel. Like I've been seeing other countries that have done it over an extended period of time. Again, mm -hmm. if I'm going to see where we're going to go, I might as well see who's done it first. And yeah. I, right. And, and, and because they're going to show you where we're going. I yep. don't, again, I'm not in love with the outcome. I'm just like, well, I have a pattern to go by here. Let's yes. and, and lo and behold, we are following the same pattern. It's yep. not rocket science. It's just like, look around. You'll see for yourself. If you feel you still want to take the shot, God bless you. If, like me, you want to wait, God bless you. I'm not, you know, I like, of course. yeah, that's it. And that's the attitude that I wish we could uh, uh, see uh, become a little more mainstream is uh, like it or lump it. We got to live together is basically my attitude. And like, if you're, if, if like I, what, what, what's causing me very deep concerns is like, you know, the collapse of a government or centralized authority doesn't freak me out too much. Um, because, uh, we've done quite well with that centralized authority in the past. It doesn't seem like it's, it's, uh, like a, a death sentence, you know? Um, but what concerns me is the distrust and animosity towards our neighbors that's been uh, fomented by this experience. And that that is how you end a, a society. A government can, can fall and people will find a way to, 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 to persist. But if you think that the person that lives next door to you is a greater threat than um, the actual virus that we're fighting, that's, that's just gonna, it's a zero sum game. You're not gonna end up in a good place. It's it's a re it's it's a retelling of the HIV epidemic. It's a retelling of right. it's, it's 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 a retelling of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the exact same thing. I mean, it's not that. I mean, people will say will say that's not wrong. So no, it, it like if you're gonna find a scientific explanation in the house, I can give a vaccinated person COVID. Good luck. I I, I haven't found it. Good luck, right? But no one's looking. It's just easier. It, when people are yeah. afraid, when people are afraid, they're looking for anything to blame, right? That's um, right. And I think right? I, I think that what's happening is the lizard brain is running the show right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's by design. It, it's by, to some degree, it's by design. I, 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 I look at the media and I, I, they've done a hell of a job. And I, that's why so, I asked it. Yeah, they've done a hell of a job. This is good. This is a question that I wanted to ask you. As someone who is is in the alternative media sphere, I would say, um, how do you see the uh, effectiveness of mainstream media? Because as an outsider, this is the this is the complication for me as as someone who consumes media but isn't necessarily a part of the conversation in terms of like having having my voice be uh, publicly uh, accessible, what I, I can't tell how far the reach is between mainstream and alternative. Um, it, it because I'm, I'm plugged in to both in a lot of ways. I'm a, like I, my priority is trying to figure out the truth. That's how my brain works. And so I explore every option and then I draw draw conclusions based on that. But I don't know how many people are doing the same. It's hard for me to tell from a distance because when you read mainstream media, like it's clearly slanted, but I don't know how many people agree with it. You know what I mean? So, so, hmm. I, so 
I, I think it should be established. I don't think much of this system when it comes to integrity or ethics. I think that's pretty much a given. So if I don't trust, so my tendency is if I don't trust the source I'm being given, right, then I'm going to be looking for other means to find information. Um, more people are aware of, more people are looking beyond the media for answers for very much this reason. Mm -hmm. At some point, like what really turned me around and made, made me consider, reconsider the whole perspective on COVID was when we were like kids go back to school last year. Yeah. That made, that changed my whole perspective on it because I, I had, even if, even if kids weren't necessarily at risk, teachers were. Right. And, and yeah. my like, girlfriend's like, a teacher. So that was that, that whole thing just threw me for a loop, man. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 right. So my thing was, and also here is the thing that really blew my mind. If you did, if you absolutely had to get kids to teach, do you know what we actually had access to at that moment that nobody thought about sports arenas? You could have literally have distanced your kids in all these unused spaces. It could have been done and it would have been and and you know, if, if they had said, well, hey, here's a thought, pay a hotel to like rent out a whole section just for kids. Yeah, and, if we're going to subsidize businesses, why not use it towards a public good, right? Y yeah, exactly. Like this could have been done. It, w it, it wasn't that hard of a stretch, right? But no yeah. one was thinking in those terms. Instead, we're going to put them back. In so when that happens, like, so the question that came to my mind, that there, there was also that, but there's also this. Um, the other part about this was for me, why am I working in a pandemic? Cause I was doing some temp work here and there. Why are people going to work during this? If it's yeah. really that kind of um, scenario, right? Um, so uh, I, I guess my question is how far do you think the reach of mainstream media is relative to the alternatives? Do you think that they're actually getting their message out as clearly as, as, cause you know, I, I can't tell if, if it's uh, an effective uh, bludgeon of propaganda um, or if it's just a chihuahua barking at the Rottweiler because it's scared. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay. So this is what mainstream media does. So Howard Stern figured this out in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Trump perfected it when during his term as president. Right. And the media has been somewhere in the, me in the middle of this. You say something controversial or you say something that creates polarity. Yep. So, so what, what – was so – I don't have to necessarily believe a word you say, but if you get me to get a reaction to something that you've done, you got me. It doesn't matter what you say at that moment in time. Right. That is the, so in this sense, media has done a masterful job, but on the flip side, um, aren't they sort of right. undermining their own authority by doing that though? Oh, no, no, but that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, that, but that's the flip side, right? Yeah, that, that's the total flip side about this. You, you, sooner or later, someone's gonna one day to wake up and think about everything that they're being said and presented. They're gonna say, "This shit don't add up." It's not everybody, but eventually, enough people. Media number. If you look at the ratings on CNN, if you look at the ratings on all these different places, they're dropping massively. Mm -hmm. Why? Because no one believes them. Yeah, it's all right. That's yeah. right. Right. So and why would they? Because we again, that's the. the yeah. The the, yeah. That's the thing for me is like it's not like uh, someone told a story that wasn't true and now people don't trust them anymore. It's like they've shown themselves to be demonstrably uh, false on too many occasions. And they were. And furthermore, the, the real problem for me is if you lie or if you make a mistake, that's cool. Own it. Own it, apologize, and try and improve. But they don't. They don't even want to acknowledge some of the things that that they've, uh, you know, either obscured or lied about. And like, it, why would anybody trust someone if you know they lie? There's just no point. Well, that, well, this is it. I, it goes back. I can't remember when the media was honest. Mm -hmm. I'm forty. What what story do you one hundred percent trust from the media? In the last 40 years. So when was your awakening to this? I'm curious. Nah, reading Fahrenheit 451 when I was 15. 
and mm. watching an episode of ba Babylon 5 called The Illusion of Truth. What they did, what because that's a really smart episode, because what they did was um, the news network from Earth came to do a story on Babylon 5. Babylon 5 defected from the government, said they were coming in, and basically they did a burial piece on Babylon 5. But what was interesting is that they showed you how they did it. It was it just, they took an example of how it could be done. And it made me kind of realize, I have no idea if what I see on my television is real. Like that was what I got from that episode of Babylon 5. It's like, nice. right? And that, when the moment I had that thought put in my head, it was like, I've never- You question it. everything after that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, because there's no, there's no, um, there's no way for me to know. Mm -hmm. I'm taking somebody at their word. And yep. if you give it, and, and again, and then when you realize it too, like when you realize what, like I remember like little things, like things nobody remembers. Like remember when uh, GM was hiring in Oshawa, like in the late nineties? I do. Yeah. There was this thing, there, there was this footage of like, what looked like a racial confrontation and just looked like a racial one. It wasn't, mm -hmm. my dad was right there. He was going for a job there at the time. It wasn't a racial confrontation at all. Right. Right. So when you start seeing this and when you start like really, really looking, you reckon, right? You realize, without, without, the, without the, like the, the bias shades on, right? Where you're looking. Yeah. For yeah. Yeah. Well, like once you, once you come to that conclusion, once you see like, this isn't real. Like once that comes, that hits your head. That's it. You never go back. You yeah. can no longer see it that way. Yeah. And so, right. Some people say, well, they don't trust their government, but they trust this. Well, they don't trust this, but they trust them. What I've learned in this life, like the world we live in is by and large an illusion. Mm -hmm. And that's like, once you realize that. The social never, aspect of the world is definitely mostly illusion. I can, even, I can agree with even, that. Yeah. It, even the infrastructure, most of how our infrastructures work, like there's a, there's, what you think it does and then there's what it right. actually is and most people don't know the difference they've never yeah. they've never considered that they're different and and what i think what i think is now what's happening now is people again you do this for so long no but like we'll become like russia russia doesn't trust anybody and why their government has openly tried to kill them. It's kind of hard to get trust right. back once yeah. you cross that line, right? Yeah. And it, and again, if you deal with anybody that's come from there, they don't like they're friendly. They don't trust you. Why don't they yeah. trust you? Because so how been, do you how do you determine um, like how do you make sense of all this if that's if that's the case? I, I just simply I, I I just do it with, like I do with everything. I take you at your word until your word or your actions prove otherwise. And then in the moment, in the moment, I, the moment I see an open contradiction, I just believe the contradiction because it, that's the, that, because that is the, all I can go by. I can't, at, at that point, your word no longer means shit. And once that line is crossed, right, I, I, I now, how do you determine the difference between like an honest mischaracterization without like realizing that you're, you're working with bad information and an outright like deception. Okay. So I'll, I'll do an example. So I, I was hired to do a crowdfunding campaign by a client mm -hmm. and I would, I told them, okay, I needed who was involved and when was the date of the campaign? They said, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give that to you. Months would go by nothing. I had some idea, and to be fair, I had some idea who was involved, but I never got a full list. I never got a date sure. for the campaign. So, but they wanted to do the campaign. How, how do I believe that? Because I don't have an idea. They want me to run the campaign. I have no date. I have no information. I have no names. So on the one hand, they are saying they want to do this. On the other hand, I got this this and this like no dates no, no information requested my suggestions right. were being ignored i have no clue of the date so i can't start even market i can't even start marketing a campaign really because i got nothing to work with right yeah same thing with everything you look at anybody or anything you listen to 
listen to what they say. Take them for their word. I'm not saying don't assume they're a liar right up front. That's way too much fucking work. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but what I will tell you is, what I will tell you is, look at their actions. If their actions, yes. their actions, their actions will tell you everything. Like again, I mentioned this earlier. If COVID was so scary, why did why send kids back to school? If if it right, yep. if, like again, these are these are these are questions that weren't really answered very well. Right. Now, again, yeah. you for, can for me it was for me it was if if uh, if it's so dangerous to go back to work, then why are why why are construction companies still working on condos? Yeah, exactly. It was that was like, the big opener for me. Oh yeah, no, or or fast food restaurants or anything yeah. like that. I mean, you're handling food. How much about how more health risk can you get? Right. But, I mean, but but these are. These are little things that make people naturally ask questions. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they were wrong to do it, but there, at some point, there had to be open, transparent communication. Yeah. There isn't. That yeah. also is telling in of itself, right? There's not even an attempt, right? So, so do you, do you have any outlets that you turn to for, uh, for um, like, an honest uh, – analysis of things I, well it, it depends on what the issue is for this what i've been doing is i've just been reading the latest science preprints i don't have a peer-reviewed double-blind trial to go by so all i can do is look at the latest findings whatever they are good and bad and i look at both uh mm. I, t I tend to have my own conclusions but that 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 all said but you're working um, with actual data yeah i i, I actually yeah. will look at the data i will come to a, a thought process and again and same thing I'm going to say, I'm data is can be open to some interpretation for sure. Now I've had some great debates about some of that data with some people, right? But what I what I in in that case, that's what I'm going to go by. I am not even going to listen to a damn thing there because none isn't going to tell me anything. I'm going to look at the new. I'm going to look at the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm going to look at the New York Times. I'm going to look at the Guardian. I'm going to look wherever anyone's openly talking about this stuff and some of the legitimate concerns I have because I have concerns, not just for myself, but for everybody, because I own yeah. like, right. That's because that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you said, we're, we're in a, we're in a flux moment. Things are, the potential for things is kind of like, uh, it's beyond anything that we've experienced in our life for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, certainty is the devil when, when you're in a, in a state like this, right. Um, yep. it's best, like you said, not to fall in love with an outcome or to, or to trust a particular, uh, messenger, you, you know, you have to be a little more, uh, a little less certain. I think well, you have to be okay with the uncertainty like that. Yeah, like, like, really what it is. yeah, yeah. Like I've had my own near death experience. I've had my own, I've had my own like experiences. Same. Yeah, so when you go through those things, death doesn't scare you the same way. You recognize no. the fragility and you've made your peace with it. And if you have that in you already, this can't rattle you, right? This can't. This really can't rattle you. What what it can do is it should make you aware how fragile life is. And I encourage anybody, no matter who you are, go for whatever dreams you have because you don't know how long you got. That's the one thing that's not yeah. guaranteed in this life. But – you know, what I would tell people, and this is what I just tell people regardless, you know what you're here to do, do it, right? Whatever that is. And from there, from there, like beyond all that, just, just let live and let live. It's not super hard or super complicated. And it's, you'll find that if you have that attitude with people, um, the world is generally a better place. Yeah. So to pivot away from uh, no worries, go ahead. The most controversial subject we could possibly pick. Um, you just said uh, uh, you know what you're here to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, how how do you know what you're here to do? Because I know that yeah. there's a lot of people who, out there who doubt, and I'm curious how uh, how you discovered it or how you uh, have the certainty to kind of move forward. I, I just have always listened to the voice in my head, just kind of like to do this thing, and and. It's been there pretty much since I, I'm in Canmore right now. Okay. okay. Making yeah. everybody jealous of my mountain pictures. And I've <laughs> because, seen them. 
Yeah, yeah, there, there we go. I hate you so much. It's like, but it, it is what it is, right? Um, but I just, there was something inside me that said you could do the most good here. Uh, I don't know what that is exactly, but um, that's uh, that's kind of what I went with. I kind of kind of a wing and a prayer on this, but at the same time, you know, I'm doing okay. I. Uh, it, it like I said, I I've done something a lot of people freelancers kind of wish. I've already hit I've hit four figures, and I did that very much, a very 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 much a uh, a quick deal. It's like holy crap! And uh, so now the next step is to do the next jobs. Which again, I got myself. I just finished a writing gig, and I, and I'm figuring out the rest of my package. And once I do that, I mean, just doing what I've been doing. So how do you determine? Shit. How do you determine what's a yes and what's a no? I close my eyes and I ask. Hmm. It's really simple. Um, you know, I just, it, it, it's, it's, I close my eyes. I ask, I, I, you listen to yourself. Um, there's going to be a lot of people in this life that are going to tell you what the right thing to do is. Truth of the matter is, I mean, they know about as much as you do in most cases. Doesn't mean you don't listen to some people. Some people have great advice. I, I, I tend to give yep. some good advice here and there. But yes, I've the, found that some people will give you advice that you need, and some people will give you advice that they think you need, and it's a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You have to filter that, and like understand. In some cases, it comes from good. In almost every case, it comes from a good place. But also, yeah. you got at the end of the day, you got to look in the mirror and love who what you see at what love what you see, or make be happy with what you see there. No one else can do that for you. So, I would rather make. 10,000 mistakes than have a single regret. And that mm. has been pretty much, if you want to hear the actual, I think the moment of turning point, I think I can actually say this. I had this crush on this girl in high school. Her name was, her name was Shannon Campbell. She was one of my sisters. I had this huge crush on. Hi, I Shannon. Hi, <laughs> yeah, Shannon. And I never made a new, I, I never made a move. I have no idea what would have happened if, they, if I had. Mm. Right? Maybe a little bit of an idea, but not really, not really. And, I'll never know because I waited, I waited right. far too long. And if you had asked and the answer was no, then you wouldn't have this doubt. Uh, well, yeah, well, I, w well, I wouldn't feel it. Right. No is great. You know what? No is people think are upset with no's. No is an great. answer. It's, it's better an to answer. have a answer. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I, I would rather like, you're going to hear a lot of no's in this life, folks. Just, that's just the mm -hmm. way it is. That's not a bad thing. Keep going. But yeah, I mean, yeah. right. You're going to hear no a lot. That fear, I, I, that fear of rejection, like, no, man, like, life's too fucking short. I, I I, can literally count my regrets in one hand. I can literally count my regrets in one hand. That's a, uh, and I'm going to try to keep it that way because life is so, so short. God's, I, I do believe in God. You got to do confront the Almighty. He's going to say, Josh, you were a fuck up. Yes, I was. Are you proud of me? That's it. That's pretty much how I'm going to be because um, yeah. I'm going to have a list of mistakes. And I mean, some dumb ones, some smart ones, some, but I did everything. I did everything um, I wanted to do. I, I, and I've had some very unique gifts as a result of this. I don't have what most people would call a normal life and I don't really want one. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I, I, I discovered that the normal life was not for me uh, yeah. fairly early on. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, now, like I said, going on a date would be nice right now. But, I mean, beyond that, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, that, that, that's just, that, that would be a nice to have. But beyond sure. that, but, but, but beyond that, I'm writing books. I got a book coming out at the end of the month. I got. Congratulations. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. What's the book? So, it's, I, I, uh, I assume it has a working title. Yeah, no, it's done. It's called Alice One. Uh, it's okay. a sequel to Alice Zero. So Alice Zero I, uh, is Alice in Wonderland and Greek mythology mashed up together. Alice is Pandora. She opens the box and gets a certain Cheshire friend inside her head. And uh, they, she wakes up in an asylum where the playing cards are her jailers. And not spoiling things too much. She escapes out in Alice Zero. In Alice One, she's chasing the Queen of Hearts. And she chases the Queen of Hearts into this labyrinth in the underworld and there she has to play croquet against jason of the argonauts oh cool 
Yeah, and it's a very unusual game of croquet. I, I the most unusual game you'll ever see. Uh, it's got undead hydras, dragons that don't sleep, right? The Argo, the Argo shows up in there as well, as well as a few other things. And then from both Ooh. Greek and and Wonderland, it mashes together incredibly well. It's fun. The first book is nominated for the Elgin Award this year. Oh, the book, yeah, and and the second book is uh, um, up for. Uh, the second book is uh, is out December first. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, where can we find it? Amazon. You can oh. go on Amazon. It's on the all powerful Amazon. It's not a comic. It's a <laughs> it's a uh, it's an actual epic poem. So oh uh, cool, what, like yeah. in the vein of the Iliad and the Odyssey kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, very cool. Yeah, oddly very appropriate. Uh, a friend of mine who actually read the. Uh, I'll give you the link here in just a second. Again, sure. I am I'm a trained professional, <laughs> and, 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 and I, I come prepared and shit. So I'm going to do it here first, right? I'm going to do it here first, and then I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn on the chat overlay here so that people can see it, and then I'm going to put it on here. As well, so people can come Perfect. see us. You can, yeah, yeah. So it's on both, so you can definitely order. This. So this is Alice One. Uh, it was fun. Like Alice, I didn't realize Alice could be so fun to write. As to why I wrote her, it was because I was requested to. And then I met a girl in the bar with a Gorgon tattoo, and then just life just evolved from there. So and then it just it just kind of came to life. It's all inspiration comes from the most interesting places. Yeah, it does. It really does. Uh, yeah. What what kind of writing do you prefer to do? Do you prefer to do um, like uh, working for other people, or do you prefer to write your own prose? Is it poetry? Is it uh, screenwriting? Like, what? Where's where's your uh, like? I'm sure it's all fun. Like, I find that writing a comic script scratches a different itch than writing a book, but um, I do have preferences. So, what's your preference? I have to say, at the end of the day, I prefer prose. Although, mm. I like experimenting. Like what I am as a creative is I'm an experimenter. So the next book I'm actually uh, drawing. I can't believe I'm drawing a book. It is what it is. Um, the the um, but the thing is I'm getting, I'm playing with the. What I like doing is I like taking a story and thinking of all the different cool ways to tell the story because mm -hmm. there's so many different ways to do it. And yeah. and you can, even in like a prose book, for example an interview sheet, like a question and answer interview in a book has a completely different experience than someone reading prose. So, right. right. I like taking like the different mediums. Um, my big favorite stuff to read right now is Japanese light novels. Not so much because of the content, although I do enjoy that too. It's the mm -hmm. fact that they mer merge so many different things into one book to tell a complete story. And right we live in an age where mediums are closer than they ever were. Like me, like you doing a music album on top of a comic is not outside the realm of possibility for you at all. Right. Don't tell everybody my secrets, man. Right. But coming but, in is, <laughs> but, 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 but it, it's one of those, it's one of those things because you realize that a story could be told in a different way. What oh, I like is, right, and every story can be told differently. A music story is different than a comic story, but you put them together, they create something even different than what the two did alone could have achieved. Right. So I like playing in that world. Like what I really, what I really think it is, is, so this is the part of me that grew up reading Ray Bradbury was he would like, if you get, like, if you ever read his work, he'd be the guy that would probably grab you by the scrub, like, by, by, like, put his arm around you, have, like, a drink of, like, some kind of drink in his hand, drag you to the window, make you look up into the stars and say, Sir, there is magic out there. And by the time you were done with him, you'd believe it. That's the mm -hmm. impression I've always had of Ray Bradbury. So that's what my stories that's what i want my stories to feel like yeah there's i, I talk about like i stuff that because that's the best stuff we tend to forget in a world like this that in spite of all this craziness going on right now magic is still happening all around us like i think one of the most magical things right now we're talking isn't it i mean like yeah. what are the odds of that oh man we're talking across uh, uh like ridiculous distance uh with almost no lag, 
between uh, our, our conversation. Other people are tuning into it. And even if you didn't hear it tonight, you can access it anytime you want. Mm -hmm. And you can listen to this exact recording word for word. It's not a paraphrase. It's not an oral story that's going to be passed down from generation to generation. It's the exact same thing that we're mm -hmm. saying right now in real time that you can access anytime you like. I'm going to listen to this again later. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's, we don't realize the fact that we can do that. Mm -hmm. That is magic. Yeah. Just because, just because you can say that there's wires and there's satellites and you can look at it and you can like knock on the metal that made it happen. It doesn't make it less magical. You know, this is a conversation that I have with my friends all the time about, you know, um, because I, my novel is about, well, the, you know, it's going to be more than one, but the first one is kind of about dreams, right? And my, you know, I have, a, I've had a lot of um, what I call religious atheists in my life, um, you know, and uh, do you know who Alan Watts is? That sounds familiar. That rings a he's bell. A, he's like a spiritual philosopher. So um, he was, uh, he was one of the... Uh, one of the Westerners that brought Zen Buddhism to, uh, to North America and to the West in like the 1950s and 60s. And he used to talk about atheists and the line that he used to describe militant atheists that have to, um, that feel the need to uh, um, liberate you from the belief in, in, in a divine power is he would say that there is no God and I am his prophet. And, <laughs> And so I've had a, I've I've had a lot of friends in my life that are like that. And so when you start talking about the the uh, the uh, the magic in the world, which is just sort of the unknown, right? It's the it's the things that can't be fully properly explained. Dreams is really high up there on the list for me. And when I when I when I would talk about you know like the power of dreams and the magic of dreams, it'd always be well, you know, you're, it's just your brain is taking information and it's you know, getting wires crossed. And when you sleep, it's just trying to like recall it. And I'm like, yeah, but how does the brain do that? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, sounds like magic to me, bro. You know, like just because you can point at the thing that causes it doesn't mean that it still makes sense. Just in the same way that we know how the, the heart works and we know how to replace parts of it. We still don't understand how that thing forms or how life can form inside the womb and just come out. And somehow the creature that comes out of the womb is the same as the parents but different enough that it's unique and no one comes out exactly like their parents that's so weird right that doesn't make any sense you would think that life would find a way to clone because it would find the perfect form and it would just mimic it but we don't do that hmm. that's magic to me well i want to expound on that see i, I i've had oh. this i had a very interesting so to me like People tell me that salt's bad for you. They're half right. They actually are half right, right? Mm -hmm. Iodized salt's terrible for you, but most people don't actually know why. This is why. You take sea salt, you take iodized salt, you put it under glass. The iodized salt is, as you say, it's a perfect form. It is an absolutely perfect form. It's matches seamless, all that stuff. Look at sea salt, it's got like these little black lines in there. It's got like, it's like they're broken pieces to it. It's they're flawed. Imperfect. It's flawed. Sea salt is nowhere near as dangerous for you to you as the iodized salt is because mm -hmm. of those flaws. Right. The true magic of the true magic of this world is we live in a world that constantly changes. Forget death. Change is the true constant of the universe. Right? Is the true yeah. constant. That's an amazing truth that in that magic, the world is always moving. No matter what we say, think, do, or how we believe the world should be, it doesn't matter. The world's moving. Like I said, going back to something I said earlier, I can make a million fucking mistakes, and this is why. The world always will change. Life will always go on. Yep. That is an amazing, miraculous thing. Yeah. The other thing, the other, the other thing too, is it isn't just the things we can't explain that has magic. It's even the things we can I can say something like this and it will hit you in a, in a profound way and you won't be able to fully understand why. I'm going to say, your show's going to work, dude. I, I can't wait for you to actually have your show come out. It's going to be a fun little experience, right? And, and, right? Yeah, and and hopefully hopefully, this is giving you the um, quote unquote, the guts, courage, the lessons you need. So when you go out there, it's like, you can do it better than me. And you know what? I don't want to do yeah. it better than you. I just want to do it better than no, I no, did. No, 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 no. 
just, 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 just oh, let me finish with the kind thought. Sure, you sorry. can, you absolutely can. I'm not, I'm good. Doesn't mean I'm the best or ever will be. You can always, sure. always seek what the, what all masters seek ultimately is to kill the Buddha. Don't be afraid to kill the That's Buddha. That's right. Right, right. That's Don't it. be afraid to kill the Buddha. So mm -hmm. what, so what, what you, so good luck. And that is a magic in me encouraging you. Right. There's a magic. Yeah. There's a magic in that. There's a magic in me. There's telling a transfer you, of energy that happens when you do that. Right. Yeah. You're, like, then, you're giving me something. And I'm, you're also giving me something, too, whether you really mm -hmm. realize it or not. Right. That's totally. powerful. You know, telling is. dirty, telling dirty jokes, uh, uh, telling dirty jokes, flirting with people, laughing, crying. Like, these are these little, little things that shouldn't really matter. I've, I've often said that joy is rebellion and joy is it's the little moments. It's the little moments in life that no matter how crazy the world gets, you can make a difference on always the smallest forms. And on the smallest levels, yes. you can change the world. And that's an amazing totally. gift we all have. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you want to do? Like what, what kind of change do you want to instigate? I want people, I want people to follow their dreams. One of the things I've been doing, like, again, what I just done for you, I've done with everybody that's come on the show just about. I've encouraged them to go forward with whatever it is they're going to go forward with. Because, again, they don't necessarily need my permission. But one of the things I've noticed what I do, and I, I don't know why people people listen to me so much. And I'm, I'm not saying that's out of this, like, on a bat. Like, it's, it's, it's an amazing... No, I get it. I have the same thing. I have friends call me who, like, they're highly yeah. respected by their circle. And they call me for advice. And I'm always like, why are you calling me? Yeah. Like... Of all people, you know, but, but what it comes, what it comes down to, what it ultimately comes down to though, is I realize like my gift, my gift, it seems to be is I give people the, if not seeing the possibilities of what they can do, give them the courage to take a step forward. And if that's what mm -hmm. I'm doing, that's, that's, that in itself is great. Um, I want to, I want to feed the homeless. I want to, I want to change, I want to keep changing the world for a better place in all these different ways, in all the ways I possibly can, to the point that, you know, maybe the world says you're too good for this place and cacks my ass. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. Um, it would be the greatest privilege of my life to be taken out because I'm too dangerous to the evil in the world. It, 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 it is, it is, and it isn't, right? Like I say, it just, it, it, it's that, that, I mean, who knows? And honestly as long as you're joyous as long as you can find people to love in your heart you as long as you don't if you can keep your mind open and you're independent and thoughtful and you understand who you are and who you're not you my friend are a dangerous man and you always will be and mm -hmm. that so one day who knows i i will always say this i am a dangerous man and i always will be a dangerous man because i do i think for myself and i don't look at the world the same way anybody else does yeah and I don't have to cooperate and that's as I get older, yeah. enjoy, I enjoy it much, much more. Yeah. Um, do you find it's a challenge to deal with people who have a more conformist philosophy to the world or do no. you just not let them affect your, your thinking? Everybody does what they want to do. When I understood that I was able to forgive everybody. The only, yeah. I, I, um, what I understand, like, like, I, I, so Nikki Nash came on the show and we, we mentioned this, like, there's no right reason. There's no wrong. There's no right way or wrong way. I 90% agreed with her. I said, and then it, 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 I said, it's why you do something. It's not that you do. There's nothing wrong. You know what? Honestly, there's nothing wrong working up purely with her or for the rest of your life. If that's what you want to do, God bless you. Absolutely. Right, right, yeah. right. There's nothing wrong with that. But yep. is the reason? But is the reason why you're working at Pure Later Career is that you love the job? You're making the difference you want to make in the world, you're making the impact you want to make in the world, or is it because you are afraid you can't do anything else? Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference there, right? And there's a huge difference there. It's not that there's a right or a wrong way. There are right reasons. There are wrong reasons to do something. Either way, though, you serve what you want, and that's a very it. I and. I've driven some people absolutely batshit crazy with this, with this philosophy, because it's like, they'll look at you and they'll get mad. It's like, no, I'm not doing what I want. It's like, yeah, you are. You're just, you're serving a want. You just, the want you're serving is maybe, maybe the want is you want to make sure your kids are taken care of. 
stability. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, st- yeah. Stability. Nothing wrong with that. That is a want. Like that is a real want. You don't ever yes. at any point in this journey, you don't have to play along anymore. You can always do something else. Yep. Right. But what wants are you serving? And mm-hmm. that's a very. And what wants do you want to serve consciously? Because yeah. that's the difference. That's the difference. So either you will control your wants, or your wants will control you. If the wants control you, you have a problem. If you control your wants, there is never a problem. No matter, and, that, and that's how I look at it. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, a Carl Jung quote that I that I really like. He said, uh, "Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will drive your life, and you will call it fate." Mm-hmm. So, like to me, it's like um, you have to be observant of your motivations. It's not enough to want something; you have to understand uh, what it what you want it for, mm-hmm. right? And once you reach the point where you can understand uh, what drives you, then you can start steering rather than letting it kind of just coast. If I were to sum up what I wanted, like consciously, it's that I want the freedom and independence to keep doing creative shit for the rest of my life without answering necessarily to anyone or anything. I'm just Mm -hmm. able to do my thing. That's what I want. Why do I want this? Because I want the freedom then to explore other things I want to explore. At my core, at my core, I'm a wanderer. That's who I am. What am I wandering for? And the honest answer there is searching for where I feel I truly belong. That's my lifelong search. That like. I can tell you who I am, what I want, why I'm here, but I can't tell you where I'm going. That is my question to answer in this life, right? And that's yeah. why I wander, right? But again, I understand myself. I don't, you know, I by and large, I try to keep my bullshit to a minimum. Try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, trying is better than most, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how honest we can truly be with ourselves, but I try. Yeah, that's sure. all I can do, right? So, so that leads me to another question that I think about a lot. Um, how, how do you determine the difference between when you're, uh, when you're giving yourself uh, a line of bullshit and when you're actually like being authentic? I don't usually have to think about that too much anymore. I, because, so when I was like, so when how, did, I was, how did it reach the point? I'm curious because, how it reached the point where you my, no longer. Because, because my dad came from Detroit and I grew up with my dad. The one thing you wouldn't tolerate for me is lying to him. It's the one mm-hmm. thing you wouldn't tolerate. Everything else, I could fuck up a million different ways. Didn't care. He came from a very harsh environment, and in that environment, in your word is your bond. As yeah. you got old, as you got older, you realize a lot of people carry a lot of pretentious shit that I've never had to. That doesn't mean I haven't had my own bullshit moments. I've certainly had. Sure. I'm not going to say right, but. Um, I don't have to think about what I have to say because it's exactly what I feel at the time. I'm that in tune with it that yeah. it's just like I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah, if you I always tell the truth, you don't have to remember, right? Yeah, I, and don't get me wrong; it doesn't mean I don't change. I do. Like my opinions can change overnight, but what what tends to what what tends to happen with someone like what what tends to happen with someone like me is, um. I was taught at a very young age that how, how important honesty is. And again, ironically, integrity is a huge thing. And that was a huge thing because where he came from, your word was was your bond. Yeah. So you, that's the only way you survived there. Yeah. And, right. If you didn't, if your word was worth shit, no one helped you. And that, that because they couldn't take that chance. It's, mm-hmm. it's true. Like that, that mentality is true in the real world too. You can yep. lie and lie and lie and lie and lie, and it will carry you to a point. But inevitably, right? Until you have that honesty, you're fucked. If you don't build your house on something solid, then it's 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 going to get knocked down the first time the wind blows, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, that doesn't mean I again. I've done some things in this life. I I, I I'm not going to lie. There are some things like I try. You try to justify. And then, and then, but at the end of the day, you realize, no, nope, I was just a shit, right? Um, so how do you, how do you maintain uh, like a, a like a patience with yourself? Because I know that there's a lot of people out there that have difficulty with the inner monologue, kind of like whipping them constantly with uh, the mistakes they've made or the or the, the the flaws that they exhibit or the lies they tell themselves. How do you how do you keep that stuff? 
uh, from overwhelming the the sort of certainty machine you've got. Drugs? No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, the answer to that is you have to make peace with what you've done. Also, you got to recognize the fact too, no one's going to judge you harder than you. It's true in art. It's true in life. Um, I've learned there are some things, again, I, I've done some things in this life I'm not proud of. That all said, um, I've learned from all those things. I've made, I, you're yeah. allowed to make mistakes. Um, I think I, there are some mistakes I, I, I think about and repeat and go, what the fuck am I doing? And again, you know, ways perfect. We all have our, our, our fuck ups and that's, and then that's just, that's, that's an honest, that's just an honest assessment. Um, but again, what it ultimately comes down to is you're not here to get it all right. You're just here to do the best you can. Right. And that's, and that's it. Um, you're going to fail. You're going to get your ass kicked. You're going, you're going to be wrong. You're going to beat the bad guy. You're not always going to be the hero of your story and you're yeah. going to experience all of this in your life. This ultimately goes back to honesty. Are you honest enough to look at yourself and say, okay, I did this, right? If you can do, again, if you can do that, yeah, it's it, right. Um, understand again, none of us are perfect. I, again, I've made my own share of mistakes and I still do and I always will. And that's why I'm saying all this, do I have it all together? No, no, I don't. But I, uh, I, I know that, you know, I gotta live with who I am. And mm -hmm. that, that comes with, looking in the mirror and being very honest about what I've done. And, you know, that's, and that's what keeps me centered. It's like, and I don't feel guilt or shame because I realize that guilt and shame are ultimately fear. And, um, yeah. it's not saying that, right. Um, yeah, I've done some things I, I wish I hadn't. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've made some, that's some really stupid shit. I've done some villainous like stuff that would that definitely makes me the bad guy. There's there are situations in my life I can look at and go, you know what? I was wrong. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't maybe not in the moment. Sometimes you like I, I I'm Maltese. We carry shit for a while. It's just that's just our nature. We carry some shit. But yeah. inevitably but inevitably there comes a point where I don't want to carry this shit no more. Right? Uh, and the other thing too is again, some people our problems can make our the thing about problems we know we have is they're familiar and it's, it's an easy trap to fall into. It's an easy trap to fall into. Yeah. And that, you can start identifying with your flaws, right. And like considering them to be um, advantages. Sometimes they are, but there's sometimes, also depending on the context. Yeah. 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 No, sometimes they are like, I, you're yeah. never going to fully change, but there's a point to where, where, are you not dealing with a problem because you don't know what's next and you just, you just, I know this problem. I'm familiar with this rut. I'm going to stay here because I'm comfortable in this rut. Right. Or is it, or is it, you know, I, there's the honest, I, I, the honest aspect too. Like, I, and I'm not saying this is in terms of a, a defect flaw and like a, just a physical one, an alcoholic. Yeah. I can't have another drink. Right. Even if I just want one, just, just one, I, I can't, you and know, that there's people, no such thing as just one for you. Yeah. And, and, and even with all that known, all that said, people do fall. It's a, yeah. and it, 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 it's a flaw, but they did the best they could. Is that such a terror? Like, like again, and this is, that's a, that there's a big difference between that and then looking at say, well, you know, I, I, my relationship, my relationships is, is, is my girlfriend sucks. And, uh, but I know this girl and I like, I know this girl, I know what to expect and, uh, I'll keep it. Oh yeah. That's a pitfall. That's, oh, yes, it is. that's it a hole that's so hard to dig yourself out of. Oh, oh yeah, God. no, it, it totally is. And it happens yeah. all the time. Right. There's a difference, right? So knowing your quote unquote flaws, right. Some things aren't going to change and you accept that. And the things, and, and if you, and if there are some things you don't want to change, that's fine too. Sometimes mm -hmm. why, why don't you want to change? Like, for example, I have a big belly and to get rid of my big belly, I got to stop eating vanilla ice cream. 
Well, <laughs> I, I'm okay with the big belly if I get the vanilla ice cream. Right. Right. I'm okay. It's a trade off. You're, you're accepting the trade off. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, yeah, right. So, there, there are like, there's all like, I'm keeping this like stupid simple because Lord knows flaws aren't always this easy to, to accept. Yeah, totally. But that's, that's what it comes down to ultimately is it's always why. It's always the reasons. It's not what you do, it's why you do it, I think, more than anything else. And we don't win every battle. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. You're not, no, no one comes into this life. With, like everybody gets KO'd by something. If this was a boxing match, yeah. I've, I've taken, I've, we've all taken a few to the face. Yeah. We've got a few so, wells for sure. Yes. Yeah. 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 Same. <laughs> More than a few. Yeah, exactly. You come out, <laughs> you come out. It's like, I'm okay. Yeah. Really? I'm okay. Twitch. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so uh, to uh, just the last question I wanted to ask you before we start wrapping up, cause we're reaching hour two now. Um, you made a transition to Twitch uh, a year ago, and this is the we're celebrating the anniversary right now. So why Twitch? Because there's so many other platforms and options. What what was it about Twitch that appealed to you? The community. It's an incredible community. I writers are always looking for enthusiastic readers. Yeah. Honest to God, honest to God, gamers are the most enthusiastic crowds in the world. Oh my God. God. What? Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? I don't care if I'm open the uncool. That's part of my charm. Let's just like, <laughs> right? Right. That's part of my You're charm. in the right community. If you're openly uncool, that's like, that was, that was the thing that brought me into the gaming community in the first place. I was like, that's Oh, right. we're all nerds here. This is great. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I just, I just, I just, and I say it like that because you want an exciting, like, YouTube for all it's it don't get me wrong, maybe I should care a little bit more about YouTube. But to be perfectly honest, I don't It's a little gatekeepy, right? Well it's it's not even so much it's gatekeepy, it's just I, I it's my resume. Like that's honestly how I look at it. It's you sure. want my resume, it's right there. You can look at mm -hmm. it all, all you can look at it all. You can watch my evolution. Um as far as uh um some of the other ones, some of them would be interesting. I, I but again I I have opportunities in other platforms too. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I've done that. So for me, if it were nailed it down, it's the community and scale and writers don't really tap into Twitch as much as they could or should. Right. And there's some great communities. There's some great people on there. There's whole worlds there. It's such a neat little, like I'm still exploring it. Um, yeah. Yeah, last night I was on another stream, like like just just as a as a observer, um, talking music with uh, Nicolina of Hertzel. I was on her stream. We were just talking. I was talking about she's she's putting out some of her music. And what I usually do is again, I I, I encouraged, I just encouraged it because that's, that's my nature. Right. And right. So it's cool they got to do that. And then I go to uh, another one. Her name is Miss Shigatsu. She's a Minecraft builder. Very entertaining person, very fun, free spirit. Hi, Mr. Gatsu. That's just because. And then, then I'll go. I'll go to another one. Always in girl who plays like these. This is like a horror challenge. She plays these games to terrify her on purpose. It's funny, right? Just funny. That's awesome. All right, right. So you got all the like. These are just and I, and I am so skimming on so many different. Right. Yeah. Games, that's just right? a scratch of the surface. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. There's there's a lot of great people playing games like. It's almost like it's like a better version of a newsletter. If you want to be really, really frank, it's like a better version of a newsletter. Cool. The thing about newsletters I, is I love it. I don't mind creating content for them, but with everything else I'm doing, it it it's work. And I have enough work. Yeah. I go on Twitch and make an ass of myself for two hours nobody notices or everybody notices depending on how you look at it and i i, I get yeah. to have fun like marketing like like the wrap this up marketing freelancing marketing writing art all of it you build your story whatever that story is you build it you create a cool little place for it and you invite everybody to come play that's that is essentially it in a nutshell mm -hmm. right less business more fun 
if you can create that story, whatever that story is, whatever that 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 environment is, and you can make it fun. So uh, my, oh, I guess last time I talked about, I remember. So my favorite thing I used to do at One Words Collide was it's the easiest panel I ever did every year. It's called the Dr. Seuss off. You want to see grown ass adults read Dr. Seuss in the Valley Girl voice, a Russian voice, uh, yes. do an operatic singing, right? It's fun. I encouraged so like what I did is I encouraged fun. Yeah. There's not a soul alive that doesn't want to play. That's human yeah. nature through and through. So what you yeah, do you never is you that, right? God, no, never. So you find that, bang, you got them. Mm -hmm. And you will have them because of how you made them feel, right? That's that's it. Like, I, I and, and by the way, anyone listening to this or watching this, I'm making this sound so much simpler than it is. <laughs> totally yeah, yeah right but sure. but it's like when i say oh yeah just buy a drum kit and then join a band it's, it's like whatever you know it's, it's like, like so it's so hard no, it's no, like, no, so yeah and then once you're in a band that's when the real work starts right so yeah. like it's not even yeah. and that's it so like one year on twitch i have almost 100 followers it's going slower than i'd like on the other hand i've had i've had a lot of great experiences on twitch and there's a whole other community there mm -hmm. and I'm slow, right that I'm accessing that nobody else is. Say I become an established household rock star name on Twitch. Well, I, I'm the Twitch father or something like that in the writing sure. community now, right? Yeah. And that's why, That's why. like, although I, I am have posting this one on Facebook too tonight, it's also why I generally just focus on Twitch because Facebook is meh, right? YouTube, YouTube is... Okay, you know, and and no, don't, right. don't get me wrong, I'm all for growing both of those platforms too, but they're not in the right place to where you're at right now, I guess. No. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, anything else you wanna you wanna say before we wrap this up? So I don't know. So how was the interview? How was I a good guest? I think yeah, I think this was great. Personally, I had a I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, I don't know how how well our COVID conversation is going to go over with the general public, but who gives a shit, right? Like, I mean, that's the I, point I, of it. I, I I legitimately don't. It's it's one of yeah. those things. Yeah, and honestly, I, I think that I think that discussions like this are what's necessary if we're going to start making sense of these things. If we keep hammering home the same message without any sort of nuance or without any sort of alternative uh, opinions, eventually, you know, this is something that I uh, yeah maybe I'll wrap up with this. Um, this is something I learned when I was in culinary. So I was a supervisor at a restaurant. It was the first time I had actually been like in a position of responsibility. Um, and uh, the general manager left and was replaced by someone who did not like my my personality. Um, now, in my, you know, in his defense, I used to have quite a temper and I didn't really have a good control of it. But um, in retrospect, uh, what I really needed was a little more patience and a little more guidance, not necessarily uh, the way that he went about things, which was to make me a, make me the enemy. Um, now, the the point of what I'm saying is, eventually, uh, it reached a conversation where he said, um, "Now you can either quit, or we'll find a reason to fire you." Were his words, and uh, this is a time before con constructive dismissal was on the books. So uh, I was in a tough spot, and I decided to quit. And when the chef uh, found out he got quite upset and he pulled me in the office and said, I'm really disappointed that this happened. And, uh, you know, I really wish that I could do something about this, but he's my boss and I can't really tell him what to do. And I said, that's fine. But I said, I'm going to give you my prediction on what happens next. I said, this guy doesn't, uh, th the reason that he wants me out is because I don't, I don't do what he says just because he says it. I ask questions. I challenge his thinking. I make alternative suggestions. And that he considers that to be a threat. I said, that kind of personality is going to attract the kind of people that just agree with him. And I said, one day down the road, he's going to be surrounded by yes men and they're all going to be wrong. And this place is going to go belly up. And that's exactly what happened. So like the lesson for me there was you might not like someone saying, I don't agree and telling you why, but it's really important that you have that person next to you when you're wrong. 
because you know. we can be wrong but like you said we can be wrong and we can make mistakes all the fucking time and for me it's more i would rather have someone tell me how out of step i am than to be surrounded by people who think that i'm god's gift to whatever and i end up you know falling flat on my face as a result can i add one more thing to it absolutely also, man okay, so this is the last this is and then i'll go back to you you can wrap the show up there for tonight. sure um also two people can disagree fundamentally and still respect each other yeah I had a, right and and here's the and here's the deal i had a friend of mine she came on the show i did an article about 1930s germany comparing it to now mm-hmm. suffice to say i gave it she's of german descent as well so we we had a hell of a discussion because she disagreed with almost all of it mm-hmm. and i and and we had a very good back and forth and at the very end she was like you know normally people would just get really rejected like, why would i do that i need someone to look at my stuff Mm-hmm. If I'm if I'm trying to tell the truth as best as I can, then I need to be challenged. Yeah. Not because right, I need to be challenged. Not because if if I'm, what I'm saying is true, it will survive the scrutiny of the challenge. That's right. And and even so, I will get a perspective I never otherwise would have had. Right. I benefited greatly from that disagreement because even though we still disagreed. It was a very, like, we both came out with different perspectives and understandings. And also, I submitted it to somebody also from Germany that actually lives in Germany right now. We had a fun discussion, too. Right? And it was, it right? And it was, but again, it came from totally a place of respect. It never mm-hmm. from a place. And we disagreed. And you know what? Cool. I'll still have a beer with you. It's like, whatever. Right? right? So exactly yeah. yeah not not agreeing on something isn't the same as being like m- mortal enemies oh no right God, no. and yeah it's important to distinguish the difference i think mm-hmm. it's healthy to disagree be afraid when everybody agrees that's when somebody's been hoodwinked and uh-huh. are, it, it's you <laughs> so um it's your show to wrap up, man. I'm just the pretty one. All right. Well, uh, I want to say congratulations again on your one year anniversary of being on Twitch. And uh, I, um, I've i been able to make some uh, really interesting connections and, and, and friendships through my, uh, uh, through my comic book. And uh, you were the first podcast I did. And you were uh, integral in, in, uh, getting my campaign off the ground because I was an unknown, a legitimate unknown when I first started doing this. And uh, I will always uh, be grateful for for your help in in making me a writer professionally. So whatever, whatever future I have, whatever trajectory I end up taking in my life, um, you are in part responsible. So it's all your fault. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And thanks for having me, man. This is a blast. I really enjoyed uh, this conversation. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, thanks for doing it. And like I said, when you do your show, yeah. let me know. And I'll have to come back up there and do oh, yeah, it official. Dude. Yes. Right? 100%. Right. Well, folks, that's tonight. Tomorrow, I'm just going to check the guests here. list here. Leanne, Kathleen, and Gino is my guest tomorrow night. Wow, she's fantastic. Tomorrow. Oh, it'll be it'll be fun. I think I think I made a fan of her. I'm not sure, but I think I did already. But we'll we'll find out when she comes on the show. Nice. All right, guys, stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. I will see you guys tomorrow night as we start year two of Twitch. Take care, guys. <laughs>